In this lecture, let me give you a quick overview about the heart of our BeagleBone hardware, that is the SOC. As you know that SOC stands for System on Chip. And this is the idea behind the SOC. Prior to SOC, we have a big board where all the controllers like peripheral controllers, memory controllers, DMA controllers are actually they are on the board. Okay. So for example, if you want to have the RS232 functionality, then you have to first use the controller chip. Okay for it on the board okay uh, let's say if you want to use the ethernet uh, functionality for your application then you have to mount the ethernet controller on the board okay uh, so if you want usb functionality then you have to mount the separate usb controller chip okay and if you want to operate usb with the dma then or any other peripherals with DMA, then you have to use a separate DMA controller on the board, okay? So using these many controllers on the board, obviously they will increase uh, your PCB size uh, as because as you need more functionalities, okay? So because for every single uh, functionality, you want to first mount the corresponding controller for it, okay? So, so that would obviously increase the form factor of the board. So in today's scenarios, uh, the manufacturers always want to keep the form factor as low as possible. So to solve this problem, so what the chip engineers have done is they have now come up with the SOC, okay, which, which actually consists of all these controllers on a single chip and that's why it is called as system on chip okay so here is a one such example okay that is our AM335X SOC designed by Texas instrument and this diagram shows the functional blocks inside this system on chip so in this lecture uh, let's explore some of the functional blocks of this SOC okay uh, so you can access all the documents the application notes uh, the sample codes drivers etc okay related to this SOC and its peripherals by visiting the TI website okay uh, you can visit this link and you can get more information okay so this AM3358 is the SOC which is used in our BeagleBone Black Revision C hardware, okay? So if you want to know the exact part number, then take a look into your board. So it's written on the SOC, okay? So now let's go through some of these important functional blocks of this SOC one by one. The complete functional block of the SOC is very hard to explain and TI has documented everything in a document called TRM. Okay, the TRM stands for Technical Reference Manual. So this document is above 4000 pages, okay, and, and will give you all the details uh, about the SOC and its functional blocks. So need not read from beginning to end. That's almost impossible. So, but whenever you need information about specific peripheral of the SOC, you can visit that section and you can extract more information. Okay. So don't try to read everything from this document. Okay. So now we will refer to this document as and when we require information during the course. Okay. So here is another uh, SOC from TI, okay? This is OMAF 4460, okay? This SOC is based on ARM um, Cortex-A9 architecture, okay? So the board manufacturers take these SOCs and they connect their board peripheral across the SOC. Okay, so for example, uh, Circuit Co is the manufacturer of BeagleBoard, BeagleBoard XM and the BeagleBone Black hardware. okay. So what the board manufacturer basically do is they take this SOC from the chip vendors, okay, and they will hook up lots of external peripherals across the SOC 
to make a board. Okay, for example, let's say a board manufacturer wants to connect the graphical LCD. Now the board manufacturer need not to worry about the LCD controller, okay? They need not to use any separate LCD controller chip, okay? Because the SOC itself gives the LCD controller, okay? Here you can see the chip provides the on-chip LCD controller. Suppose if the manufacturer wants to connect, let's say, the memory devices such as NAND flash or NOT flash, etc. So they require the memory controllers, right? The SOC provides on-chip memory controllers for connecting external memory devices, okay? So that the manufacturer of the board need not to worry about finding separate memory controller chip when they want to connect some external memories. Let's say the manufacturer wants to hook up uh, DDR memory, then the SOC gives the DDR controllers built on the SOC itself, okay? The manufacturer of the board just has to connect the DDR memory to the SOC, that's it. Great, now let's go back to our SOC that is AM335X and the heart of this SOC is a MPU which stands for microprocessor unit, okay? The MPU unit is made up of the ARM Cortex-A8 processor, which is a 32-bit RISC processor from ARM and can run up to the speed of one gigahertz. So here you can see that there is 64 kilobytes of RAM and you can also see that a 176 kilobytes of read only memory that is ROM, okay? And this SOC also has 64 kilobytes of shared RAM. So we can say that this SOC has 170 kilobytes of ROM and in total 128 kilobytes of RAM, which we can use to run our code, okay? And the processor also has separate L1 instruction cache and L1 data cache, each of 32 kilobytes. And there is also a L2 cache of 256 kilobytes. And after that, let's understand this L3 and L4 interconnect. So for this, let me take an example of OMAF 4460. SOC, okay? So take a look into this uh, OMAP 4460 block diagram. I'm just using OMAP's block diagram because in AM 335X TRM, this block diagram is missing, okay? I, I don't know why, because they might have removed it, okay? So for the example's sake, uh, I'm showing you OMAP's interconnect, okay? So it will be almost similar. From this diagram, you can see that uh, the interconnects are like highways, okay, which carry vehicles. So here these interconnect buses carry information packets from various controllers to peripherals and vice versa. So here you can see that most of the controller subsystems are connected to L3 interconnect, okay like the MPU subsystem, uh, the DSP subsystem, display subsystem, graphics engine, okay, DMAs, USB controllers, memory controllers, uh, the general purpose memory controllers, okay, so that is GPMC, okay, so that stands for general purpose memory controller, which is used to handle the external memory interconnections. And here you can see that these subsystems uh, can do 32 to 128 bits of transactions. So most of the controllers are connected to high-speed interconnect, which is L3. Now the peripherals like SPI, the timers, GPIOs, UARTs, etc. are driven by the L4 interconnect, which is less speed compared to the L3 interconnect, okay? The L4 interconnect control access to the peripherals. So these interconnects will have their own sets of registers to configure its properties like speed, data width, NDNS, etc., okay? 
there is separate section to understand interconnects uh, if you are interested you can always refer to these sections so the SOC uses three or more L4 interconnects to connect the peripheral modules okay so to conclude the interconnects are nothing but high-speed buses which carry information between the various controllers and the peripheral devices of the SOC okay so and all the interconnects will have its own set of registers by which you can control the data width speed interrupts etc okay great so now let's move forward and now the AM335X has lots of serial communication peripherals such as UART it has support for actually six UART peripherals or controllers okay uh, two SPI peripherals, three I2C peripherals, MAC ASP control area network and it also has high speed USB support. Okay also it has system related peripherals like EDMA which stands for enhanced direct access memory controller support, timers, ADC, watchdog timer, RTC, PWM etc. Okay and it also has uh, interfaces for parallel data transfers like GPIO, MMC, SD card and SDIO. So you can connect SD card and EMMC memory to this SOC. Okay. Also there is a support for Ethernet Mac. Okay. There are two Macs are available. That means you can connect two Ethernet Pies. Okay, remember that this is a Mac implementation. Okay, uh, you have to connect the Ethernet Pi externally. For example, if you check your BeagleBone hardware, you have a Ethernet uh, RJ45 connector over here, right? So whose part number is P5? Now let's go to the schematic of the BeagleBone Black hardware and let's check the Ethernet connection. So here let's search for the component name okay so th the component name is p5 right so let's search for that okay uh, so now this is not the one let's move forward okay so here it is so the P5 is actually a component name on the board for Ethernet connector, right? Let's search. Uh, let's see where this connector, this is a connector, right? So where this connector is connected. Okay, so here it is. This is the IC uh, where the Ethernet connector is connected. Okay, so let's copy this and let's see what it is so go to google and just search that part number great so it says that it is used for interface and networking and this is the ethernet file and this is from a microchip so let's go to this website okay so here you can see uh, this is actually microchips uh, uh, LAN 81 uh, these are high performance small footprint low power 10 base T 100 base T uh, trans receivers specifically designed for today's consumer electronics blah 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 uh, and uh, yeah so these actually connect to the Mac layer using a variable voltage digital standard uh, known as MII or RMII interface okay so that means here you can check our SOC supports uh, the Mac layer which actually uh, has an interface such as MII and RMII right so and this file also needs uh, this these interfaces okay so so that means you have to connect this file to the Mac layer so which is right there on your SOC there are two uh, Mac layers supported uh, by this SOC okay uh, and you can connect two such 
uh, files uh, to the SOC and you can drive to Ethernet connectivity. Alright, so just search for this interface uh, in the Google. Okay, so it says that it is reduced media independent interface, uh, which is a standard uh, developed to reduce the number of signals required to connect Pi to the Mac. Okay, so just read about if you if you are interested in, in understanding these interfaces. So uh, I'm not going to cover these interfaces uh, in this course because I really don't know how these interfaces work and and you can always get the information from the Google. Okay, great. Now let's go back to our uh, schematic and let's see where this chip is connected. This chip is connected all the way to the connector, isn't it? So this is the Ethernet connector and and its part number is LPJ00. So let's copy this part number and let's search in the Google. Let's see what it says okay so yes so this is just a connector okay this is rt45 connector okay so there is nothing special about it so the beagle bone uses uh, this rt45 connector from this company okay link double p and you can see here uh, this is non poe okay so that means poe stands for power over Ethernet okay so that means you can deliver uh, the power through the Ethernet connectivity so so if you are interested in PoE you can search Google and you can understand so so this is a new concept so which discusses how you can uh, transmit the power over the over the internet so you know that you can transmit the power over USB right so that's how you charge your uh, cell phones and other uh, equipments using uh, USB by just connecting it to the PC uh, because you can transfer the power over USB similarly you can transfer the power over Ethernet okay but 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 this this jack actually doesn't have uh, support for that so this that's why it says it's a non PoE all right great so that's how you can uh, decode the data sheet and you can understand uh, what are the uh, components are actually used uh, for the interconnection of various peripherals all right great now let's move ahead